Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Love Hour podcast. I am your host, Miss Kev on stage, and I am joined by my husband and co-host. The Kev on stage. And <laughs> if you've never been here before, we're a relationship podcast where we talk about life, love, and the pursuit of happiness. We are not experts. We share from our real life experience. However... On occasion, we do have experts on, and today we have a very special guest, uh, Miss Tracy McMillan. She is a author, TV writer, relationship expert, and host of the brand new show on OWN titled Family or Fiance. Please help me welcome Miss Tracy McMillan. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello. Hi, thank um, you for having me. Yes, of course. So let's get into it. I'm going to briefly describe um, this show. And it's so funny because a topic, a question that I get quite often in my DMs is, help, I do not get along with my in-laws. Help, I do not get along with my mother-in-law. Help, my wife doesn't get along with my mother. <laughs> This is a question that I get often, and I understand that it is a dynamic that exists and is um, quite common in relationships. And so navigating how to reconcile those things some, for a lot of people is quite difficult. So I'm excited to have this conversation with you to offer some help and insight for those couples. So Family or Fiance follows engaged couples who bring their disapproving families together for three days under one roof. I got stressed just reading that. <laughs> In this high stakes social experiment, couples and their extended families participate in activities designed to strengthen bonds, explore differences, and see their relationship in a new way. So before we even like jump into, I'll just read a question that I've received from one of our listeners. Can you explain to us um, what brought this show on? Like kind of what's the motivation behind doing a show like this? Well, I think this is like one of the most common problems out there. Like you said, um, it's in your DMs all the time. I mean, I always say that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle yes. are the world's <laughs> most famous episode of Family or Fiance. That is like, hilarious. That is no so funny. Where that you're not going to find this issue. And there are a lot of reasons for that. Number one, most people choose a partner out of um unresolved things going on inside that come directly out of the way they were raised and out of their families so hold on tracy don't you can't go push past that say that one more again because i you done struck a nerve there that's right so we choose our partners based on our unresolved issues from our childhood and unresolved things going on in our family wow is that you're feeling that? Yeah, I, we was talk. <laughs> me and Melissa were just talking about that. Literally, yeah. just talking about that. Uh, therapy is very helpful for this because you. I don't yeah. think it's conscious that people do this. We we're talking about oh, uh, attachment from the last episode of the Love Hour, and I was watching it because I wasn't here. But I'll give you a quick example, and I want to hear what you're saying. And I didn't realize it. Oh, sure. My family wasn't supporting me in like uh, sports or coming to anything like that. Melissa mm -hmm. came to all of my basketball games, even the ones that were away. Like you know, and she didn't have like a lot of money and things like that. And I didn't realize I was like, what they didn't give me, you are mm -hmm. giving me. Right. So I will, you know, I will hold you close, but I didn't right. realize that's what I was yearning for. And her right. showing me that is what part of the reason I was attracted to her. And well, we're almost 21, 22 years together. And I just realized this wow. last Thursday. Well, isn't that funny? <laughs> um, well, usually what people do is they grow up, they choose a partner who also doesn't come to their basketball games, whatever that is. Yeah. You know? Oh, and they do it the other way. Yeah. Most people do it the other way. Or they, they just mirror the what they write. Yeah. They reenact mm -hmm. whatever it is that they didn't get. Or like, look at the case of um, Harry and Meghan. They're a great example, right? Because he picks this partner that is vilified by the world and the media. You know, like the media essentially vilified his mother, loved and vilified. Then he that. picks a partner that they're going to love and vilify. He could have picked some girl next door that they would have been perfectly, you know, some Kate Middleton. They would have been perfectly happy. Oh, my God. And then he reenacts the wound that is unresolved. So now he gets to do the whole thing over that he felt as like a 10 year old boy gets to do the whole thing over but he gets to make a different choice. This time he has power, he's an adult, he takes the wife out of there and is like, we're out of here. 
And so. Oh, he, Tracy, I don't think we had a guest that blew my mind that much in three <laughs> minutes ever on the Love Hour. Boom. Yeah. He is writing a wrong that he felt he had no power as little Harry. Wow. Right. Now big Harry. And that's why he's ready to do what he wished his dad yeah. would have did for his mom. Wow, that's Protected right. his mom. So he's like, right. I'll show you how. That's right. Now, what most of the time, it, it could have gone the other way. He could have just reenacted the whole thing and just let them eat her alive. Now, a lot of times, you, you see that the narrative, though, in the press is she's the one in power, right? right? And he's the one who's, like, going along with her. But in fact, no way is that what's happening. I agree. What's happening is he's redoing his childhood only this time. We all do this. We come into adulthood. We get into our relationships. We want a do-over. And we either get the do-over and we win this time, or we get the do-over and we fail once again. Now, I'm sure we all have friends and relationships that over and over, they get the do-over. Like, let's say they had a cheating dad. Well, they get the cheating man. They get the do-over. They go for the cheater again. They don't go the other way, Dang. right? <clears throat> so once you start seeing these patterns, you're like, oh, damn, I thought I had free will. <laughs> and you're like, you don't. Everyone's sort of programmed. You can't make choices really that are completely outside. It'd be like saying, I'm going to have thoughts that aren't in English. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's like you're in a thing and you're going to be in that thing. Now you can practice your way out of it. It, it. You just have to become aware. That's where the choices happen. Man. All right. On here let's go home okay. uh, yeah. i mean dog i'm tripping mm -hmm. i am really tripping i am too do you feel i know you're talking about um the do-over so when mm -hmm. you find yourself kind of mirroring let's go with that example and then we can go to the flip side mirroring the example that you had in your household right. uh the spouse that you're choosing who are they going to resemble the problem the person that you had the most trouble with Sometimes. So usually it depends on where you are and people can manifest it in different ways. Right. Sometimes we man. And I mean, if you look over your dating history, if you date long enough, you'll usually see times when you went for I, I always say it's like this times I played best actress and times I played best supporting actress, which is to say you can kind of go back and forth between times where you are the person who's feeling powerful or times where you are the person who's playing the one down position, if that makes sense, uh -huh. right? Like there, there are gonna be times where not like, so I had a dad who was a womanizer. Um, there were times when I would choose the womanizing man and then I would usually flip out of that and choose the super safe guy. Then I would go to the womanizer, but then that would be like, yeah, and I wouldn't have a clue there. You know, and I thought it was boredom, but what it really was is this isn't really offering me the opportunity to resolve my thing, right? So, so is it I the opportunity to resolve, or is it the? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, well, I'm just gonna say I wasn't magnetized in the same way because it wasn't offering me the opportunity to resolve my problem. Got it. Yeah, say what you were gonna say because I know where you're going. Okay, Go so is it the familiar? Because we heard a lot growing up that it's familiarity. If you grew up in a dysfunctional house. You yeah. you recreate that. Is it yeah. the familiar familiarity? I, I don't even yeah. like that word. It's, I can never say it right. Or is right. it the familiarity with a chance to change? Uh, well, okay. So familiarity means family. Familiar means family, right? Mm -hmm. Usually, what people do is they reenact. You had a tone. moment with that. Are you having a moment? Yeah. <laughs> Tracy, are you okay? Like, <laughs> no, I'm what? fine. That's why I said I'm For not going to give you a list of tips. Yeah. <laughs> but I will. We will get into some stuff. Yeah. Listen, one of our Patreon people said, "Here I am, minding my business, and here she come busting up in my window." <laughs> Who sent this woman? <laughs> I didn't even think about that as the root yes, word of fa familiar. I love it. Yeah. So that's why something seems familiar because it's somehow. But there's lots of points of contact with family, unresolved family stuff. You know, you can have sibling relationships that get reenacted. You can have parent, mother, father, you know, mother relationship, father relationship, stepmother relationship. Like I've noticed over the years that I will have relationships that mirror various things. I'll be like, oh, that was, you know, my adoptive mom or, oh, that was my foster dad or, oh, that was oh. my dad, dad. 
you know? So, and it's really about, I mean, I almost see it as, I always think about the story of the fairy tale about the Rumpelstiltskin. Mm -hmm. I think it was him. Yeah. And there's the, they throw the girl, the princess or whoever she is in the room. And then the evil queen says, here's a big pile of flax. I want you to turn it into gold by morning. And she's like, well, how am I going to do this? And then Rumpelstiltskin's like, I'll help you, right? But then the next morning she comes in and instead of the queen being like, oh my gosh, this is so great. You can go on about your business. The queen says, ah, here's a bigger room with more flax. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Turn this into gold. And I feel like that's so much about the relationship journey. It's like, you're never really done. It's that you build on the things that you, once you have healings, it almost sets the stage to have to take on now a deeper wound Got it. until I see that we do generational trauma. Yeah. We start healing things for our ancestors and we start healing things for our children. All right, and let's take a that, break real quick, um, yeah. Tracy, because this is amazing, but we got to thank our sponsor real quick. So we'll be right back. Okay. All right, we're taking a break from the episode to tell you about Dame Products. It is a woman-founded company that makes sex toys to close the pleasure gap. Yeah. We've talked many a times on this podcast about the orgasm gap, which is that women orgasm less than men in Big relationships. Oh. Oh, no. At the end of the day... Uh, Listen, sometimes we need help and exploration with our bodies in order to get there. Mm -hmm. And Dame makes products that is focused and its primary goal is for the pleasure of women. Pleasure principle. Did you know that women are four times more likely than men to say sex is not pleasurable at all in the past year? That's a that's a that's a pretty significant number. That's a pretty significant number. They have everything from vibrators and accessories, and they're made with medical grade silicone and smart design principles. Whether you're a couple looking for an extra boost where it matters or on the journey of sex, uh, self exploration, we're sure they'll earn a spot on your nightstand. Listen, guys, early in our marriage, I made the grave mistake of thinking just straight hard peen was enough. Okay, I'm just going to give it to you raw, missionary, pumps, 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 pump, 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 pumps, 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 pumps. Sounds like a song from the 90s. Right? Uh, pump, pump, pump it up. <laughs> I said clitoris, smitteris. I don't pay no attention to you. But now, as a seasoned veteran in the game, I know P and V G is just not enough. I want to make sure my wife is pleased. That means I've got to give her clitoris the attention it deserves and the dame toys they're made with women in mind they know where that clit is they give you a little soft touch a little sucking vibration and now she's like oh okay now you you i'm saying you doing what i need you know what i'm saying and it don't have to be all or nothing it don't have to be or you just use a vibrator all by yourself man you mix it up give her a little peen and a little vibe you give her peen in the middle vibe at the top peen vibe peen vibe peen vibe give her a little they got one called the poom you got to satisfy the poom poom Use the poom, but you want to go the the A E R. It's pronounced the air. This is the sucking thing on that pulse setting on that clit. That clit say, "Hey, ho, whoa, whoa!" I'll have what she's having. In Hello. order to get her what she's having, you gotta get the Dame products. The clit deserves priority, number one draft pick, attention, and Dame's made with clits in mind. Go to dameproducts.com slash love today for 15% off site-wide. Again, go to dameproducts.com slash love. Love. Go there today for 15% off site-wide. And now let's get back to the show. All right. Thank you to our sponsors. Okay. (laughs) Tracy, you just made me something. You made me realize something I also learned in therapy. Mm -hmm. It's not just, and I know we're talking about romantic relationships, but you can also, uh, I'll use the word replay, your Mm -hmm. relationships uh, with friends yeah. based off family and relationships yeah. you wish you had or thought you had. I learned this about myself in therapy. I was recreating or I was trying to create scenarios of where uh, my friendships with uh, in friendships with uh, of the relationship I wanted with my biological father. Mm-hmm. And the thing about it, not having therapy makes you not real. The thing about therapy that I've learned the most from is to realize what you're doing and why. Because I right. think for so long, doggone 38 years, almost 37 mm-hmm. years, I was just doing stuff. And I thought I kind of, like you said, you had free will. I thought I'm just going along, making decisions, mm-hmm. you know, ho-hum. None of these things are connected. And mm-hmm. then I realized, because my therapist used to kind of get on my nerves. Like, everything you do, girl, come come back to when you were five, when you were six. I don't even remember that yeah. stuff. Yeah. And she's like, mm-hmm. oh, you do. Your body remembers. Even before you That's can right. remember memories, 
you right. already remember right. stuff right. prior. And I'd never thought I could have friendships or relationships with employees yeah. or people who worked for me. And you're mm-hmm. connecting like it's more than just my mom, my dad. It's, it's a, an right. adoptive father or basketball coach or whatever. And this friendship is yeah. that. And I'm making the same mistakes or doing what I wish happened. Um, and sometimes that's not the worst thing in the world, but it is if you don't know what's happening because right. you don't know right. why you're making which, these decisions. Mm -hmm. And I mean, part of that is because we have all these memories that are laid down before the part of our brain develops that is like the filing system. So everything that happens before the filing system part of your brain develops is basically just out there free floating. And your brain doesn't know if it's from past or present or future. It doesn't know where it was. So it just thinks it's happening right now. So that part of our brain, it's called implicit memory, is so much running the show. Anytime you're having like a big giant reaction to something that doesn't seem like it fits the size of whatever's happening right now. So you've just got to know that that part of your brain is for real and it will run the show. And the more you can make those memories conscious and the way you do it is when you feel one of those things, you start to feel that big giant reaction. You're like, what is this? And that's it's like, a trigger oh, you're talking about. We colloquialism mm-hmm, call trigger. Mm-hmm. We call them triggers or those are memories. And um, when you start to make those memories clear, like, okay, so what's happening? I'm feeling what? Oh, someone cut me off in traffic. Oh, okay. So what does that match? Well, it matches someone not caring about my need or not seeing me. And pretty soon, if you start really paying a lot of attention, your, your things will start to emerge, your own personal patterns. And you'll start to know way more about your own emotional world and how when you're dealing with something that's yours and when you're dealing with something that belongs to the other person so this goes all to the family or fiance part right so you get in this relationship and then you're in this thing with the mother-in-law or whoever she doesn't know what's happening to her you don't know what's happening to you and he doesn't know what's happening to him most of the time once you start to sort it out all of a sudden you can make choices because you're not so just in reaction all the time. You start to see the patterns. I need to take another break. Uh, Not for the sponsors. I just need to take a couple deep breaths. Inhale and exhale. Because I think somebody said, they're joking. They're like, this is why I'm not, I don't want to have no kids because I'm going to mess mine up. Right. And I think. They are messy. Yeah, you will. But that's okay. Because then your kid has stuff they got to work on. No one's perfect. Like we all have deficits. So that yeah. is not going to happen that anything on the human plane is going to be perfect. It's just not like that. It doesn't need to be that though. You need to be able to repair when a rupture mm. happens. That's all. That's Ruptures good. Ruptures are going to happen, you know? That's really good. That, that was really encouraging because you're saying the rupture will happen. We're all going yeah. through this life. We're going to mess up, but it's not uh, about being perfect or presenting uh-huh. as perfection. It's about go, making sure that you're able to repair once it does. That's yeah. really encouraging. That is really encouraging because I was just about to be like, man, this is dumb. I'm going to finish just crawling into a hole and then nobody can bother me. But then you're going to be like, you crawl into a hole because your dad crawled into a hole when he was young and you didn't <laughs> well, see it because he crawled true. into a hole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <That's true. laughs> but then you get to go, do I want to carry my dad's Because a lot of times you start to get into adulthood, you see these patterns, you're like, that's not even my deal. That's my mom's deal or my dad's deal. Do I want to carry around their backpack? No, I do not. And then you, you, in your meditation or your prayer or whatever, you hand it back. You're like, you can have this back. I don't need to carry this. Man. We were talking about this with Melissa. Uh She saw her dad uh, Mm -hmm. uh, doing the bills on the table and for whatever reason, that memory stuck in mm-hmm. your mind. And she realized that's part of her money story. And she's recreating that even without the stress her dad mm-hmm. had. Well, you that's know, what I was going to say. The reason you remember it is because there was a charge going on while mm-hmm. he was doing that. Oh, yeah. What well, do you mean by a charge? On, well, there was a tone. This is what I mean about we recreate the tone of our family home. We can go find the most, you know, you, you, like somebody who looks and acts and is totally different from our parent. But what we're going to find a match for is how they made us feel the tone Mm. of how they made us feel the emotional tone. So there was an emotional tone at that table that you were picking up on that you paid attention to. You knew, uh Oh, something's going on there. And you, that became part of your like memory. Your body knows that. So 
you recreated that in your life. Whatever that you're like, well, money equals that feeling. Mm. Dang. And even without the same stress or whatever he was having. But I think that's the, the, what you're talking about is really interesting because there's a lot of good things going through my mind right now. And even as you're talking about the tone, I'm thinking about, cause we just talked about somatic. Uh, uh, oh yeah. Yes. All that. So I'm trying to be more aware of like what's going on in my body as you're talking. Yeah. And I'm remembering uh, the kind of stress Mm -hmm. And the gravity of my dad mm -hmm. sitting down. There's also a very like kind of take charge moment because my mom's mm -hmm. money story was that of rack it up, he'll pay it down, rack it up, he'll pay it down, rack it up, he'll pay it down. Oh, wow. Rack city, uh, rack city. Yes. Yeah, so I mm -hmm. all of that is kind of flooding me right now. And so I'm thinking mm -hmm. about, okay, what happens in our life of I need to take charge. We need to do this. We need to, mm -hmm. and even if there's no need for stress, I will create yeah. that energy of money equals stress. Right. And what do you mean? We're not stressed out about money, but we need to be because those are the two things right. that I associate together. And yeah. Listen, yeah. you, Tracy, you, you made me realize something so clearly when you said the person has the unresolved issues, the partner has the mm -hmm. unresolved issues. And then you add the yeah. family, right? Their parent, mm -hmm. each parent, mom, dad, and then mine. Exactly. This is six people's mm -hmm. yeah. unresolved yeah. issues that are not only unresolved, they're undiagnosed. And they're unaware, yeah. yeah. And we're unaware of why I'm acting, why the way you act makes me feel this way, why your mom said that and made me feel this way mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that. And and we also feel so close to our parents. You know, you you know, even in the Bible, it's like leave and cleave, and you're just, you know, yeah. leaving that relationship. So it's like kind of shaky ground. That is a lot to navigate. And it yeah. actually makes yeah. so much more sense why people have so many issues with their family it, oh, yeah. than just like they don't like me. Yeah. It's really more than that. Oh yeah. Way more than that. It's not usually it's, I mean, there's basically anytime people are having conflict, it's because needs are involved. So it's like, you know, it's just needs. So if somebody's having a hard time, like very common scenario on the show is there's a mom, she's been number one for her son. Now here comes the fiance. The fiance wants to be number one. She's like, no, your mom cannot be number one. She needs to step back. And then that's the source that becomes like a huge conflict. And he feels in the middle. And um, what, I mean, of course, from a relationship science standpoint, the research is very clear. He needs to put uh, his wife or the fiance first. It mm -hmm. has to be that the couple is the primary relationship. But of course, that's going to cause him to have to resolve something with his mom that maybe they have been dodging all this time. You know, they've just been driving around it. Or he know? didn't or, even create. Well, yeah, or he had her in number one position and now he's going to have to take her out of that and she's going to go through a grief process that she's trying to avoid, you know? Like, oh, shoot, my baby's leaving me, you know? Or who knows? Like, that could be waking up things from her own childhood. But whatever the case is, the nuts and bolts of it is, my partner needs to come first, but what all it triggers, well, that's where it gets complicated. Yeah. On that thought, let's take a quick break and we'll come back. All right, we're taking another break from this very intense but really good episode with Tracy to tell you about the Flex Company. Flex Company. First and oh. foremost, oh. my book club weekly, there's a thread that a woman starts that says, I'm starting today with flex or i just finished flex and i love it or i can't believe i'm just now starting flex this is amazing i promise you these pop up randomly all the time in the book club i keep screenshots because it is amazing you don't have to take my word for it i'm trying to tell y'all y'all be agreed. thinking it's just me saying the things to get y'all no 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 i'm trying to change your life change fuck. your life and i mean that literally your period is often an inconvenience if you're going on vacation you don't want to go on your period if you want to go swimming you don't want to go on your period if you're getting married you don't want to be on your wedding day on your period your honeymoon you don't all of these things all you think about is lord please don't let me be on my period please don't let me be on my period please don't let me be on my period or let me finesse my birth control to try to skip some months take control we, listen forget all all of that, you can have your period and still live a stress-free, leak-free life. Frustration-free yes. life. You know, you listen, Melissa and I have planned a very extravagant vacation for Christmas. Heaven forbid Mother Nature wants to get on the trip with us. 
Leave your behind back. I need them draws. Or maybe you want to give up the draws. Lots of women are more hornier during that time where the, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying, situations be situationing. Correct. And so the, uh, the Flex Company has two different options. They have the Flex Cup and they have the Flex Disc. The Flex Disc will allow you to have sex on your period. The cup is a reusable uh, medical grade silicone that you can use every single month. You just watch and rent. They're made with a velvety soft um uh silicone that's really comfortable inside of the body and it has a pull string that makes it really easy for it to come out so you don't have to freak out thinking that it is stuck in your body um listen i don't i, I really truly cannot say enough things about this this is probably one of the um partnerships that i'm really the most excited mm -hmm. about because i've used this since the very first tour that was my experience traveling being on tour meeting people all of those things and i said this ain't it chad this, this ain't it i gotta have more for me than being on my period <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta be more to this life and that's how i was introduced to this i promise you you're going to want to start this so say goodbye to cramps put sex back on the table and lend mother nature a hand go to flexfits.com slash love hour and use code love hour for 20% off flex fix disc starter kits or 10% off your first flex cup plus free u.s shipping that's code love hour at flex that's f-l-e-x fit.com slash love hour one more time that's code love hour at flex f-l-e-x fit.com slash love hour uh, we also want to tell you about Chime. Chime is an award-winning app and debit card with no hidden fees or monthly premiums that I believe Joshua uses for real in the real life. Yes, I do. I yeah. Yes, you do. A lot of our Patreon users, though. A lot of our Patreon users. This is another one. You don't have to take our word for it because we have people that actually use this in the actual real life. They are a fee free overdrafts on up to two hundred dollars in debit purchases with Spot Me. Listen, I love a good. Look, can you spot me? Can mm. you spot me two hundred and not charge me overdraft fee? Spot me two hundred. Come on, it's like overdraft protection, but better. Get your paycheck, benefits, stimulus check, tax return up to two days earlier when you sign up for direct deposit. Uh, plus, they have over sixty thousand fee-free ATMs at locations like Walgreens, Seven Eleven, CVS, and more. When you sign up for Chime spending account, you can enroll in an optional savings account and grow your savings automatically with a 0.5% annual percentage yield APY. That's 10 times the national average. Join the millions on Chime. Sign up takes two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Apply now at Chime.com slash love. love. That's Chime.com slash love. love. Chime is a financial technology company. Banking services provided by the Bancorp Bank or Stride Bank NA members FDIC. Eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. Overdraft only applies to debit card purchases. Limits start at $20 and may be increased up to $200 by Chime. Early direct deposit depends on the payer out of network cash withdrawal fees apply third party and cash deposit fees may apply go to chime.com slash love, love for details detail. all right thank you to our sponsors we are back with tracy who is destroying our lives yeah. <laughs> uh, when you have one of the other two kinds of relationships usually you know when you're in one of those you really know it when you're the anxious person because a lot of times anxious and avoidant find each other i'm sure you guys talked about yes. this the avoidant is dismissing their thing is um, feelings aren't happening. They don't want to feel, they don't want to have conflict. They don't want to have intensity. They don't want any of that. Is that you? Oh yeah. As you were, as you were <laughs> okay. saying this, I was like, ah, this sounds so good and comfortable. I'll just go right. take a walk instead of dealing with this. <laughs> yeah. They're numb. They want to be numb. They just want like, like, a, just an empty room. They just want like empty. I just want to watch The Office. Yeah, exactly. Instead of dealing with this. Yeah. Ah, exactly. that Michael Scott. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And in fact, when there's a conflict, the cool thing about being with an avoidant, and I'm on more on the anxious side, and so I always have to remember this, is that they want to get over the conflict as fast as possible. And then they never want to think about it again. <laughs> Why are you telling these people my business, <laughs> yeah. Terry? Get out Crazy. of my business. 
I it was fine to me. Everything was like okay. I made a mistake. Look into my eyes. Talk to me. We will never sleep until we resolve this, and it's resolved once. We will never deal with it again until the yeah. next problem, which is just another version of this problem. Hopefully, a long time from now, where the anxious can't stop thinking about it. You know what I mean? They they walk away from the conflict going. Oh my God, they're, I'm going to get abandoned. Oh my God, like this, they can't, they, they're preoccupied, you know what I mean? So, and they're preoccupied with the partner and the relationship. They're like, how is everything? We got to resolve this right now. We can't ever put anything off. Everything has to happen right now. Or it's, you know, and there's a lot to this, guys. But essentially, an anxious person is recreating the anxious baby, right? The anxious baby all babies have what's called signal cry. Signal cry is like, I'm hungry, I'm wet, I have a problem, I'm cold. Well, an anxious baby is in protest or signal cry all the time. An anxious adult is all the time protesting, saying things, I'm hungry, I'm this, I'm this, I'm this, all the time. The avoidant baby doesn't really, is it shut the whole system off. They're like, what? I have no needs. So then they grow up to be partners who are like, what? What's the problem? Why so many? Jeez, whoa. And they just want to be like very, very still. In fact, a lot of times they don't even emote as much in their faces don't move as much as. <laughs> <laughs> Where the, the anxious person's over there going, react, do something, say something. You know, like we just say something, I'm partner. giving up on you. <laughs> So when you're in one of the, that's what I'm going to call an unhealthy relationship. But I don't really like that word unhealthy. I prefer to say it's insecure. It's insecure. Shouts to Issa. You can move towards security by just taking the actions that a secure person takes. Boom. You're going to be that much closer to secure every single time you take a secure action. So when we talk about do we have hope? Yeah, it's going to get better literally in your next move. So every time you make a choice, that's a secure choice, you're going to have a little more secure. Every time you make a choice that's an insecure choice, a little more insecure. So this is really, it's so simple, guys, in this one way. I mean, it's not easy, but it's very, very clear. And this is all research-based. I'm not, like, making this up. This isn't, like, what my best friend told me. This is, like, quantifiable science. You know, what's so interesting uh, to me is that the dynamic of the daughter-in-law not getting along with the mother-in-law, you tell me, but it seems to be 90% that's what's happening. It's never like my husband doesn't get along with my daddy. It's always the wife doesn't get along with the mama. Why? Right. why what's that about? Well, <laughs> I think that's usually going to be like a mom who wants to be the primary attachment figure. And when that is removed from her, she experiences this huge loss. That is what happened in me and Melissa's relationship. Yeah. I was a mama's boy, mm -hmm. uh, always up under my mom, my whole mm -hmm. life, always staying at home, you know. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden I'm 16 and I want to hang out at this girl's house all the time. So Melissa's first interactions with my mom is my mom uh, having her as you are the reason my yeah. son is leaving. Right. You're That's the right. reason my son's not around. Mm -hmm. So I can't like you because you are taking away right. whatever, you know. So what, what was going on with your mom that you were fulfilling that role for her? Did she, what was going on in her partnership? I don't know. My dad must have sucked at something. Shut up. Uh, maybe he <laughs> no, was, no, he was but traveling no, he a lot. probably wasn't meeting her needs though. I, and if, I'm, you're, if your dad's in there meeting her needs, she doesn't need to get the need met from you. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's out there working. He's not paying attention to her. Maybe. And I'm like, Mom, you're great. I'll sit up under you. Let's do this. Let's yeah. watch TV. And then I'm like, okay, uh, actually, somebody else is great, too, and we can kiss. Hello. So yeah. <laughs> now right. if that security is there, you know, sh maybe she doesn't feel that way. It's kind of remind me of, of Precious, like the movie, which is mm -hmm. based on a true story. We just see Monique's character just being mean. To Precious, right. and we're like, why is this like mm -hmm. she is just root, ruthlessly mean? And then towards the end of the movie, you find out that her boyfriend had uh molested Precious, mm -hmm. which a, a secure person would be angry at the boyfriend, oh, but right. she she felt you took the only love I had, right? Wow, so you are the enemy, even though you are not the responsible party and you were actually molested. That doesn't make sense to her, 
you mm-hmm. took my love away. Therefore, you were my enemy. In yeah. actuality, I should have been protecting you. But yeah. I think, like you were saying, if that stuff, if you're not noting, knowing that stuff, yeah. you can't mm-hmm. even react in any safe, secure way because you don't even realize that you're, you know, Melissa used the term before, bleeding onto somebody. Right. When you have this unresolved trauma, you bleed onto your kids, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, so I was going to say and see, part of the way the avoidant is created is that they feel enmeshed and engulfed by a relationship. Because when your mom is getting her needs met from you, that's the wrong direction. It's supposed to go the other way. Mm-hmm. She's supposed to meet your needs, not you meeting hers. So the fact of when being a little kid and you're the person meeting the needs of the parent, yeah. now this is fairly common, but it's it's essentially an abandonment of you. Like she needs, you needed a mother to be meeting your needs, not to be the person who's meeting hers. Right. And a little kid experiences that as engulfing. It's very empowering, but it's also like, ah, there's nothing developmentally inside of you that is able to handle that, you know, um, or file that or make sense and organize that. So that's a real issue. And a lot of what creates certain avoidant patterns in adult relationship is that you experience then the girlfriend as the as smothering and engulfing as the mom. Okay, really quickly before we take our last break, I want to say I think you've almost just answered our question in that if we're if we see um especially and particularly from the 90s a lot of women that are single raising their sons, oh yeah. then you're having that kind of dynamic that you're creating and now these men are adults because we were yeah. the kids of the 90s mm-hmm. and so we're mm-hmm. replicating or mirroring that type of relationship and yeah. so we find a lot of wives in positions where we feel like we need, we're fighting with our mother-in-laws. I'm not in that position, but as an example, mm-hmm. you're fighting with your mother-in-law because she you, her her son was quite literally her everything exactly and and it's like it's very common when you have single parent it doesn't it happens in any kind of family but it's really common in single parent unless you have a very specific type of kid who is um got a strong wall that keeps the mom out yeah but it's like oftentimes when there's a boy who's willing to meet the mom's need I, my visual, this is gross, but I'll tell you, my visual for it is like the mom's just scooping out the kid, just going, mm, 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 you know, just eating him, basically. Yeah. And you're like, ah, no, don't do that. Because the children don't have enough boundaries. Your, right. Their survival depends on this relationship. Right. They're going to go along with it 90% of the time. Right. All you right. Know? We're going to take our very last break here. Um, and say thank you to the Love Hour sponsors. All right, as we're rounding out this episode, we're going to take our very last break, and you're probably listening to this episode and thinking, Lord have mercy, I need help. Man, we done talked about it so much in this episode already. You probably need help, and you're going to need better help. Yeah. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. If there's something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals, um, then you're going to want to look to an outside expert to come in and help, especially as we're talking about the dynamics that we're talking about today where you do not get along with your uh, in-laws, yes. potentially. Those situations, as uh, uh, Tracy has mentioned, can get very hot, yes. can get very heated yes. emotions can rise and oftentimes having a third party there to help mediate those circumstances can work really really well i just told you guys well kevin's been doing therapy for two years about a year and a half year and a half um how's that going for you kevin it's been great it's been fantastic it's been life-changing for me as a husband a person father most important thing is you can't go to therapy for nobody else but you can go for yourself and you can be the best version of you that you can be and that's going to be important for you being in your relationship. And, th- and better help is a key part of my development as a man. Yes. And the last two episodes, last week's and this week's episode, have definitely uh, shined a light on the importance of a therapy. I will be starting my emotionally focused therapy. And when I tell you I'm excited, this is... I'm so excited. Uh, You can start communicating in under 48 hours. Remember that this is not a crisis line or self-help. It is professional therapy done securely online. Pro therapy. And just remember that you don't have to feel embarrassed about it. If you feel you don't want people to hear, go to your car, take a walk, whatever you need to do to get that privacy. I do the garage. 
uh, very, very freely. Uh, visit betterhelp.com slash love hour. That's better help H E L P and join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using better help that they are recruiting additional therapists in all 50 spa- states special offer for the love hour listeners. You will get 10% off your first month when you go to betterhelp.com slash love hour. And now let's get back to the show. Back to the show. All right. Thank you so much to our Love Hour sponsors. We're going to wrap up here uh, just shortly. But as we think about the show, and I know you have uh, these families do exercises. Are there any exercises that you can share with us that maybe people watching the show or people listening to this episode can be like, please, I would like to do some (laughs) exercises to make this better in my own life. (laughs) <laughs> One of the most basic exercises that we do is 20 questions. I think oh, what happens is people, couples, families, decide that the way they're going to get along is to just not say certain things. Mm-hmm. They're not going to tell the whole truth. They're not going to mm-hmm. share certain information. They're going to sort of like keep the beach ball underwater is what I call it. And in 20 questions, when you do a free exchange, of information and you finally say the things that you were really trying not to say it 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 might have a blow up for a minute but it actually clears the way for the everything to get sorted out so uh, i feel like being radically honest in a you need structure around it i wouldn't just do it for fun on a friday night but if you (laughs) sat down and usually i'll say this too most families have at least one person who kind of brings the whole system up. The wise person, it can be like the wise aunt or the wise uncle. The, sometimes it's the mother. Sometimes it's one of the kids. Mm-hmm. It, but there's very often at least one person on each side of the family who just makes sense. So if that person kind of comes in and is, you know, it could be a minister also, could be a therapist who kind of is the force who just holds the system while you go to some of these really intense places, things you're afraid to say, like, mom, I don't want you to be number one in my life anymore. Mm. I'm so sorry. I want my partner to be number one. And I know that's going to hurt your feelings, but I have to do it. When you finally say the thing that you've been so afraid of saying, weirdly, the system starts to fall into place. Sometimes it falls apart you know, and sometimes it falls together. But the the thing where you're in control, that goes away and, you know, God can come in. <laughs> so I say it. Uh, when you just said that, I felt all the mothers being like, nope, I don't want to do that. <laughs> But yeah. what, what if you recognize that it's me, Tracy, I'm the one you're talking right. about. I'm the one that's engulfed right. my son. I'm the yeah. one that's preventing him from having a, a secure relationship uh-huh. with his partner. Then yeah. what do you like? OK, I say it's me, Tracy. What am I going to do? So I think what you do is when you see something about yourself, whatever it is, you say, OK, I acknowledge it to myself. I acknowledge it to whatever your higher power is or God, whatever that is for you. And then usually it's good to tell a person, your best friend or whoever you're like, you know what I think? I think I've done this thing. No, I don't shame. What you want to do is give yourself enough like, uh uh-oh, to stop, but not so much that you want to jump off a bridge. You know, you don't have to punish yourself. You don't have to hurt yourself. You just have to acknowledge it and be with the truth. My, under, you know, experience is that when you just be with the truth things start to organize around the truth Mm. when you be with the lie things start to organize around the lie so it's like whatever you're aligning yourself with is usually how things start to organize in your life so if you're choosing day to day i am willing to have a new experience that is my affirmation i am willing to have a new experience i'm willing to let this go i'm here for the highest good whatever your affirmations are it happens It can happen in an instant because it's not really like distance in that way. Sometimes it takes years and we practice and keep practicing, but also those new understandings come like turning the lights on. It's like, Oh, I see it. And then things just, your life starts to organize around the new, the new truth. It's just how it works. So that's what I think you do. Um, 
I love this. Can I ask one more person in this uh, this trio? Because I think we've answered for the mother in law. We've okay. answered for the son. If you are the wife in this mm-hmm. scenario, because mm-hmm. I feel like you're in the most delicate position of it all because mm-hmm. you're the yeah. you're the in-law so mm-hmm. how what is your role in this what should you do well I think what the wife wants to do is to know the truth right especially if she and her man have an agreement he's like look we're working this out with my mom but I'm here with you and I'm not going anywhere and you're number one if he can say that that's all you really need then you can afford to be very generous with the mother And maybe there's a time when you can say, look, I will never replace you, but this, you know, our, the couple has to, is the foundation of the family or whatever we're trying to build. And um, so we do need to be unified in that way, but I want you to know, I love and respect you and I love and respect your spot. You know, now if the boyfriend or the husband cannot say you're number one, that's a little bit more difficult. You know, Um, if he can't say that, you have to know it. And then if you can't, you're going to have an unstable relationship if you can't say it. There's just, that's how it's going to be until he can. And it's not about harassing him and getting him to do it. That is very touchy. It's almost like a whole nother episode. How do you deal with a partner who won't get with the new thing? Mm-hmm. That's a bigger issue. We all have partners who either cannot or will not get with something. I'll say this. I never think people, I've come to the understanding, no one is ever holding out on you. They are giving you what they have. If they're not giving it to you, it's because they don't have it. Mm -hmm. So moving into a place of like, why don't you have that? Isn't going to help. That's just going to shame. So you have to come to a place where you're like holding a space for them, but maybe coming to your own truth. Can I live with this person where they are? And again, that's where we go back to, we all have deficits. So uh, I, I would also say this, I think there's excruciating pain and excruciating discomfort. Pain is when it's a, a no-go. Pain, I'm talking about pain. Discomfort, and people get the two things mixed up, that's not that big of a deal. That means there's something you get to work on, maybe a way you get to grow, a <laughs> practice of love that you get to do that you can love this person where they are. It's just uncomfortable and you don't, it's not fun. But sometimes we have to be forbearing, you know, in our relationships and just practice loving the person and maybe they come around, but not if it's abusive and not if it's like excruciating pain. That's the difference. Listen, you have Josh, who's our producer, videographer. He just started cleaning up the office and wiping things down. I don't think he knows how to, to, to cope with his feelings right now. Bye, Josh. He did not uh, anticipate. He took the headphones off. He couldn't do it. Okay. He literally just took the headphones off. Um, man, this was really impactful. It was. I think the biggest portion that you just said was the idea that people aren't holding out. They don't have it. Oh, They're yeah. giving to you. I also think Dang. there is a reconciliation of that truth because mm-hmm. it is one thing to hold someone accountable thinking you have it in you and I'm going to nag mm-hmm. you till you get oh, there huge. versus yeah. saying this is all they can give. Am I willing yeah. to accept it? That's right. It's a different oh, conversation. Thing, oh my gosh. Uh, to me, that, that dynamic where you are like, I know who you are and you have it and you're like holding out and blah, blah, blah. That is the one of the most toxic and the research shows very, 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 very often leads to divorce. He put the headphones Wait. on and took them back off, Tracy. <laughs> he he yeah. was trying to listen again. But once you that is a tough thing to realize. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because now you, you know, got to decide if you're moving forward knowing right. that. That's a whole other episode. <laughs> listen, I know you have to go. Listen, Tracy, I know you have to go. This has been absolutely 100% phenomenal, really rich in like a really short period of time. It was. You didn't uh, waste no motion, Tracy. Not a one. For the people that are interested in following you on social media, can you please provide your socials and then yeah. tell us where we can uh, watch you on OWN? So well, I just told me. him, but yeah, I, I'm, on a, I'm on all the socials, um, you know, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at Tracy McMillan. And um, you can watch the show every Saturday night on own. It's at 10, right, 10 
Eastern. I'm so bad at this. Me too. Ten Eastern and Pacific and nine Central. But you can also watch it on Discovery Plus, which is streaming. You can watch it on demand. So um, yeah, watch it. The show's great. I mean, you'll love it. It's super fun. And you all, you'll identify with the people. I mean, how do you not identify? These are, they're all me, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Thank you so much, Tracy. Our audience is asking yeah. you to please come back. So if you're ever uh, in the the neighborhood and you're looking for some uh, podcast, we're in L.A. Oh, OK. That's yeah. where I sometimes am. I'm not there now. Yeah, but, well, okay. definitely let us know. Or when season two premieres, we can do this all over again. Yeah. Thank you so very much. We really appreciate your time. Bye. And I will give you the rest of your Tuesday back. Um, bye. 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 <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us for today's Love Hour episode. It was rich. What you got to say, Kev? Don't have her back. Hello? I can't take any more. <laughs> I can't take it. That's that's pain. This is pain. Having her back is pain. That, that is this is pain. not discomfort. Having her back will be pain. I will say this. <laughs> after, again, I'm going to just say it really quickly as we're closing out that last week's episode and this week's mm -hmm. episode coupled together phenomenally. I am also working on getting the ho Dr. Nicole. She is the host of the other own show uh, for your love. Maybe y'all gonna have to correct me, Chad. Cause I'm, I'd be forgetting that I'd be forgetting. Y'all know my memory's trash, but she will be on next week. So please uh, assuming that they confirm today, but yeah, uh, I'm working on getting her on next week. With that said, uh, please make sure put a ring on it. Thank you. Uh, please, uh, watch both of the episodes. I think they are coupled together really, really great. Last thing, if you're watching this and you're like, yo, this was really good, I am going to highly recommend that you get into um, emotionally focused therapy, EFT therapy. I'm about to start it after um, last week's episode. It is I'm so excited. Actually, I have an intake call here soon. And if you find this information, especially about the attachment theory and all of that that she was talking about, please, please, please look into emotionally focused therapy. I think it's going to be amazing. And I can't wait to share my experience with it. Anything else? Thank you guys so much for joining us. Until the next episode. Bye. Bye.